Good morning. Welcome to Grambling United Methodist Church. We're glad to see you, and if you are a visitor and you're looking for a church home, we would love to have you join us. Uh, there's an insert in your bulletin that has some um, announcements on it. Uh, one is there is a Bible study that's beginning October the 11th um, with Blair Nodine. If you're interested, contact Sue Pruitt. Um, the Finance Committee meets Sunday, October the 16th, and the Council at 6 on, on the 16th also. Um, we're having a covered dish luncheon on uh, Sunday, October 23rd. Pr please bring your meats, your sides, and desserts. Are there any other announcements? If not, let's join together and sing hymn 103. <laughs> Thank you, and if you will join me in unison to our call, for our call to worship, Psalm 16. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have glorious heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. Even at night my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. The Lord is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. And now join us for another hymn, He Leadeth Me, O Blessed Thought, page 128.
seated. Thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord for each and every one of you that are here this morning. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord? Yes. Have you told somebody you love them this morning? You need to do it now if you haven't. <laughs> you can't do it too much. You can't tell somebody you love them too much. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. I was... Uh, Several glory sightings this past week. I just hope you have some to share too. I was so blessed by Pastor Will's sermon. I was listening to it going down the interstate Sunday afternoon. And a powerful message. You can't scare me with that. <laughs> Power- <laughs> Listen to Will driving. No, it was uh, no, it was just good. I'm just so blessed here to have such a powerful uh, Third string, I believe Will Will said. <laughs> that was your words. Well, it wasn't mine. So, uh, yeah, third string kicked in last Sunday, so that's good. So, anyway, it's a good place to be. And I had a guy, had one of those guys, we stayed, we stayed at a timeshare, and uh, and the little fellow, they give us a personal concierge. I don't use, I don't use that word because I can't spell it, but... Um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, so we got to spend some time with him a little bit, and I was just, uh, that young man, uh, when he left there, we, we talked for a while. He'd been struggling with the call on his life. The Lord had been uh, dealing with him, and when we left him that, uh, that morning, he, uh, he said the Lord has affirmed he was going back to Oklahoma. He actually walked off of his job. He said, I know what the Lord wants me to do now. So I said, Wow. Uh, you know the Lord. He he was called. He was being called into the ministry, and I believe the Lord. The Lord was is moving in this young man's life. He had been on. He had had a drug addiction years before and had all kinds of trouble. But the Lord had miraculously moved him to a wonderful place, and uh, that is a glory sighting. So uh, thank God for that. Where have you seen the Lord at work in your life this week? It's it, yeah, Missy. Well, this is praise and glory sighting. Thank God. A good friend, Marie, had her on Wednesday and Wednesday. And she was at home Thursday. And she was moving around very well yesterday. Good. Wow. Thank the Lord. Amen. Thank, thank the Lord for that. Where else have you seen guests? Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Lord. Wanda, yes. I don't know if everybody else was watching Ian all week, but I watched Ian. And it looked like Ian was coming right at us. But like I told somebody, we prayed. And Ian decided to go another way. And I was like, hey, we prayed, so, you know, what can you say? That was a glory for me. We just got a little much-needed rain. That was about all we got. (laughs) That's Uh, that's a glory. That's, amen. Amen. We do pray for those that uh, that were affected negatively by that monster storm. It uh, It did affect several people's lives. But it could have been a whole lot worse all across the all across this part of the country. So, but, Amen. Where else? Good. October, my favorite month and favorite color. <laughs> it really is. October football season and. The colors, West Virginia, this is, it's already glorious in parts of West Virginia right now. It's at peak in some places, the higher elevations. So uh, it's a glorious, glorious place. Where else? Have you, uh, Brother Pastor Will. I'm going to go to church this morning with, with Don Drive. Look, and it, it was like snow on the mountain. Uh-huh. White clouds. You wouldn't want to go to the clouds, though, with Don driving, right? <laughs> well, is, is that what you... <laughs> oh, mercy, help me, Jesus. 
What a beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Anybody else? Yeah. Sue. Amen. I'm reminded of many, when, when people are running away from something, our, our first responders and, and police and all those folks, they're running into trouble while we're running away from it. So uh, remember those folks. I appreciate and honor their service. Anybody else? Okay, I know we have some special requests. Uh, Dale and Nona uh, are on the road uh, right now. And uh, Dale, Dale's not doing good. I'm concerned about Dale. So need to, you know, he's driven a lot lately and known as driving, I think, mostly. He's uh, on his way home as he went to celebrate the life and resurrection of his brother, Dave. And uh, so we remember remember that family and Val and her, their, their boys and uh, the whole family. And Dale and Nona, I suspect, was, I expect you back maybe this evening sometime, hopefully. Late this evening, if he, I told him, I said, Dale, it don't matter if you're not back till Monday or Tuesday. Just stop. If you get tired, just go stop. Find you, find you a place to lay down. And uh, then hope he finds out something with his, uh, with his health issues that's been going on. And, uh, and Lois, you had a little incident. I understand that uh, you're doing well. Good, good. Uh, anybody else? Pastor, Pastor Will. Susie Hodge. And uh, remember Lula May, she's having some health concerns right now. Is that what you was going to tell me, Betty? Go ahead. <laughs> but, but she's had some health concerns currently with her heart. She's had some issues with her legs and so on lately, her hip. And, uh, but now she's got some heart issues. She's on a hold your monitor, I think, right now. So uh, remember Miss Lula May. <laughs> Anybody else? In the back. No, in the back. Oh, Bruce. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Barbara Herlong's mother. Thank you, Bruce. And um, also the mother of one of Adeline's roommates. Her name was Cammy King. She has just learned this week that her ovarian cancer has returned. Amen. Amen. Ovarian cancer. Okay. And thank the Lord you had all good news. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? <laughs> I Mrs. Skinner. Okay. I believe I saw Risa. What's her name, Reese? Michelle. Michelle. Okay, Rick. Bet, was she a teacher? Barbara Williams? I, she was connected to the school system somehow because I noticed it come up on the, the c Rock website. Rick, I have one. Bonnie. Her name is Nancy Keith, and she's a high school friend, and she has she discovered that she has cancer, and it's everywhere. And 
and they don't give her any hope at all. And she told her family she was she was tired and she was ready to go. Nancy Keegan is a high school friend. Okay. Sorry to hear that. I have a, I have a good friend in West Virginia, Pat Brown, who's uh, 75 years old, I believe, a uh, cardiologist at the Greenbrier and had a longtime cardiologist in Huntington, a dear friend. And he, uh, no relation, but uh, he's, he's been given a terminal cancer diagnosis. So pray for that. Uh, also, my son-in-law, Jamie, they're going to Cleveland in the morning, so we're, uh, we're still hoping for a transplant and hope, praying that things can go, can go well. Any, anybody else? Stacy. Stacy. Got a, it's a great, gr great niece. Sherry's great niece has found herself wayward right now, so we need to pray for that family. Anybody else? Okay, I know we have some unspoken requests. I know I do, and that's a good, the Lord knows all about those. And uh, Bonnie's going to pray the prayers of the people for us. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather in this serene and beautiful sanctuary, we give you thanks. Thank you for life and the beauty of it. Thank you for family and friends and for their love and support. Thank you for this church and for its role in this community. Thank you for help so that we may serve you. And Lord, we ask your hand to touch those that we've mentioned this morning. They are numerous. Be with Chris and Preston Skinner and their family in the death of their mom. Be with Reese's cousin, Michelle, as she enters a transition period of her life. Lord, be with Nancy and her boys. Be with Jamie and Jill as they go to Cleveland and let your will be done and may he get a transplant. Be with Stacy and bring her back to her family. Lord, be with Dale and Nona and give them travel mercies and give Dale relief from his pain. Dear Lord, be with Lois. Be with the family of Barbara Williams. Be with Will's niece, Susan Hodge. Be with Lula May as she has difficulty with her heart and legs. Be with Barbara Herlong in the death of her mother. And be with Cammie as she, as she has to face cancer again. Be with Adeline as she lives with the daughter and give her words to say. Lord, be with Pat Williams in his cancer diagnosis. May they all feel your comforting presence. Lord, we pray for those that were affected by the hurricane. We pray for them to remain steadfast in you and not lose hope. Lord, even though the hurricane weakened and wreaked havoc and devastation in Florida, we thank you for the replenishing rain you gave us. I pray for our nation this morning, Lord, and ask that you look down on us in pity and mercy. Forgive us for turning our backs on you and bring us back as a people who seek to follow your ways of peace. Give our leaders discernment as they rule our nation. May their decisions be wise, and may they seek your wisdom and strength. And on this Sunday of worldwide communion, give us eyes to see your reflection in the eyes of Christians everywhere. Give us a mind to accept and celebrate our differences. Give us a heart to love your children everywhere. We thank you, Lord, for setting a table ample enough for everyone. In your holy name we pray. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let's take a few moments for our scripture meditation as printed in the bulletin.
Let's join together. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Amen and amen. Let's, uh, as our ushers make their way forward, we continue our worship of God through giving God's tithes and our offerings. Let us join together. Almighty God, with our brothers and sisters around the world, we praise you for the gift of faith that leads us to the joy of the Lord. We dedicate these tithes and offerings to you as we join our hearts together around the Lord's table. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. has asked for me to remind you that the words for the anthem are on the front of your built of the front of your bulletin so if you'd like to follow along it's right there on the front
For those of you that are able, will you please stand for the reading of Luke's Gospel? <laughs> Our scripture this morning is from um, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. The apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. He replied, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you had a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Would he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now and sit down to eat? Would he not rather say, Prepare my supper, get yourself ready and wait on me while I eat and drink, and after that you may eat and drink? Would he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, we are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Miss Bonnie. Beautiful prayer. Choir of such a soothing, beautiful, beautiful anthem this morning. Welcome to October. This is a glorious time of the year. But it's also a time when we celebrate World Communion Sunday, which has become over the past years one of my favorite Sundays of all. I think the Lord of all, there's a hundred fly. I think there's a hundred. I didn't count them, to be honest. Uh, I think uh, we had uh, Jeff uh, Nussman prepared those two before us and to recognize, and that's just a hundred countries. There's more countries than that in the world. And those flags represent a hundred peoples, a hundred nations of people around the world where churches all over the world are gathered around a table much like this and celebrate and recall the great sacrifice Jesus made for us. We'll gather around that table with other Christians around the world. What a glorious time and a glorious thought. I remember going to Myrtle Beach. I'm thinking it's probably the early 80s. I've been going since the 60s. And about the 80s, about the time Barefoot Landing opened. You all know Barefoot Landing? Do you remember that? I passed a booth that had a mustard seed in it. That's what they said it was. Now, you can't prove it by me, but they said it was. A little old glass thing about that big, and it had a little mustard seed in it, encapsulated in that ball. And he had a, neck, a necklace you'd put it on, and you could put it on a keychain. You could wear it on a bracelet or a necklace or whatever. It was to identify people's faith in Jesus. And I started noticing those things, and, and you know, they'd show up every now and then. then. And then the WWJD bracelets showed up. Do y'all remember those? Did anybody ever wear one? Okay, those WWJD bracelets, what would Jesus do? And, and I always wondered, of course, if that speck in the middle, was that, was that really a mustard seed, or was that just a speck of dirt they got off the carpet and sold it to me for $20? I, I, I don't know. Whether it not or not, it, what it was, it stood for something. It stood for people of making a statement of their faith in Jesus and that, that little ornament. And, and so Jesus is saying that if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, nothing is impossible. Now that statement over the last few years, now when I was a kid I took it one way, and over the past few years it's, it's really kind of puzzled me, and in some ways it's kind of troubled me. I'm not sure if Jesus was being critical of his disciples or whether he was encouraging them. I'm not sure one way or the other. For certain, the story of Luke goes into it. If you have faith of great grain of mustard seed, you can move this mulberry bush. Or the more familiar line is that if you, that you have a grain of mustard seed, you can move a mountain, right? I have not noticed many mountains move lately, at least not literally. Unless you grew up around where I grew up and... We used to take tops of mountains off, and so I've literally seen mountains moved. I doubt if the disciples had literally seen any mountains moving. It's, it's hard to say whether Jesus was criticizing their faith or encouraging them. No mountains had moved. It takes a tiny mustard seed of faith to move a mountain. Therefore, your faith, since the mountain's not moved, then your faith must be smaller than a mustard seed. You can take it that way. There is, however, another way of understanding the line. In the original Greek, the New Testament, the conditional phrase, if then, if then. There's a dual meaning there. You can't tell precisely unless you know the context of how it's spoken. Man, we got a lot of things in our language like that. If you don't know the context, you can really get sidetracked. How many know that to be a fact? 
you can really get that sidetracked. I, that's like I told somebody the day, I said I had two 91-year-old men the other day and, and down at the nursing home, and they had AIDS. And, and, and that people were shocked. They, they opened their mouth and said, well, I can't believe that. I said, yeah, they had one in both ears. And <laughs> you got to know the context. <laughs> one meaning is the one you normally think, and it's something present, then something else will happen. If, if, if A, in other words, A plus B is C. In the absence of the effect, you surmise that the cause is missing. But there's another way that the original Greek can, can understand this kind of conditional phrase. They sometimes use the phrases assuming the presence of the condition. So it might be better translated, if that's the meaning, since you have faith like a mustard seed, then great things will happen. Well, that's kind of how I've always taken it, that even my faith, as small as it is, that great things can happen because of it. We, can, we, we don't know what Jesus meant. He didn't, he didn't expound on it. He may have meant the statement as a criticism of people's tiny, tiny faith. Having walked with Jesus, I've, we, me and Sherry talk about this often in our own personal lives and also in lives of people that we witness, people that seem like stalwarts of faith, and then some little bump in the road happen, and it seems like they fall apart. We've all been down that road, say, amen, preacher. But yet we, we'll, we'll preach faith, talk faith, and then when, when the time push comes to shove, sometimes we fall short of having faith. Amen or ouch. 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 That's what I thought. We, he, he, I mean, so, so is it the tiny nature of our faith? Or he may have meant the statement as an affirmation that even small faith, even faith like yours, can do mighty deeds. I've always taken it that way. There's another problem I think we have with this text, as familiar and as loved as it is, that, that we, we know that mountains don't move very often, or so it seems. The text team seems to invite us to believe that if we just have enough faith, if we just prayed hard enough, if we believed or wished and prayed badly enough, that we could get almost anything done. Well, experience tells us that we often things we wish for or pray for, some things happen and some things don't, right? Some things don't come out the way we thought. Is that because someone else that has a seed of maybe their faith's big as a kernel of corn instead of just a mustard seed? Is one of the, it's like praying for Clemson to win. Well, what about North Carolina people? <laughs> Is their faith bigger because they, they lost or won one way or the other? Clemson, Clemson did win, didn't they? Amazing defense. I don't, I don't, some of you are Clemson fans, aren't you? I know Bonnie is. And, and Henry has to be. So, uh, amazing defense last night. What is it? Does, does that mean that their faith wasn't big enough because they lost the game? I think Jesus means that wanting something bad enough or that praying for something hard enough is not going to guarantee that this mighty thing will take place. I think Jesus is considering, asking us to consider the kind of power, the kind of ways that the forces of prayer and God's will can be brought into harmony. When our faith and God's will march in the same direction, mighty things happen. Mountains move. Mulberry bushes get thrown into the sea. I, I may have faith that I'm going to win the lottery. I, won, I had this dream one time. That I was going to win the lottery. It's going two hundred and fifty million dollars. I mean, you could retire on that. <laughs> I'd have to lower my standard of living a little bit, but but I could I could make it. I prayed and prayed for that to happen. And one day, this booming voice came to me and said, "Rick, you have to buy a ticket." <laughs> I don't buy lottery tickets. So you have to buy a ticket. I may have faith even bigger than a mustard seed that I'm going to win the lottery, but that's not going to make it happen. But when, our, when, our, when there's agreement of the power uh, between our will and God's will, when we're lining up and we're marching in that way, mulberry trees get thrown out, mountains get moved, where there's a great intersection, and that's what makes the difference. It's when, it's when the will of God and our faith march in harmony with each other. And then even a small as, as mustard seed can do great things.
I suppose I'm safe in saying there's no spiritual giants here today. I don't see any Mother Teresa's or just pretty much ordinary saints of God, pretty, pretty ordinary folks. There's no Albert Schweitzer's or Mother Teresa's among us, or at least not yet anyway. But on, e on any ordinary day, just a common day, it's not extraordinary faith that moves mountains. But what if we considered a typical week in the lives of the people of this church? Just this little place out in the country in South Carolina where you look for mountains to be moved. You look for mulberry trees to be cast aside and see the ways in which common, ordinary, daily, normal, not great, not heroic faith, but some pretty amazing things happen. Studying and praying and worshiping, singing, fellowshipping, finding our hearts warmed, our, our lives guided by the power of the Holy Spirit, our motives changed, uh, challenged, our, our mountains moved in miraculous ways. As I visit this community and daily I see it out in this, out in this community, I see our people trying to make a difference to the least, last, and lost, to those that are hurting in our very midst. I see your people visiting hospitals and homes and bringing a pie or a cake or, or a loving, a loving, just loving one another, helping those that can't help themselves, helping those. I see teachers that work hard to try to share their faith in non-judgmental ways to their students. I see that the love of Christ is witnessed daily. People trying to make a difference in a child's life who may not have a mom or a dad to lean on. I see that. I see people running up and down this road helping people in whatever way they could, not for personal glory, but that they might share the glory and grace of Jesus Christ. And finally, all of the people around the world, all of God's people, all of God's saints, the many, many people, the lives are touched around this world, the missions that take place, but our, our, even our own our money from this church goes all over the world to share and to help and to feed, feed hungry people, to, to witness to people in the, in the midst of a hurricane. We have Methodist people on site right now in Florida helping people put their lives back together. And that's all because of your efforts, because of ordinary mustard-sized seed faith like yours and like mine our blessed connection from people all around the world. That's why it's so special to me. I'm recognizing that I am part of something way much vastly bigger than I am. Don't ever doubt that Jesus is here. Don't ever doubt that your faith, at least a mustard seed proportion, can make a difference. Don't ever doubt that mulberry trees and mountains get moved all the time. And remember that little saying from the life of Jesus when he talks about the purpose of his free sermon, it began by his disciples saying, Jesus, increase our faith. Increase our faith. Leave here today imagining what would happen in light of how mustard seed faith could make a difference and how mustard seed faith is getting done. Imagine what would happen among us if the plea of Jesus' disciples would come true in our lives, what would happen if our faith was increased? What would happen? What would happen in our daily lives? Do you think there'd be a lot less anxiety? You know, 99% of the stuff that you worry about never happens. How many, how many has figured that out? How many figured out that worry is an absolute waste of time, talent, energy, and life? How many figured that out? It's an absolute faith. I remember many times... My mom would say, Jesus, Jesus will take care of you. It's going to be okay. And you know what? Jesus has never one time let me down. Whatever you're going through this morning, it just takes a mustard seed of faith to know that God is going to see you through your trial. God is going to see you through your temptation. Your, the, the devastating news that you may have just received about a family member, about your own personal life. Whatever is going on, I'm telling you that everything's going to be all right. Trust in God. Trust in Jesus. Lord, increase our faith today.
that we may know that you're in control. Help us to trust you with all of our lives and know the peace of God that passes understanding in the midst of an anxious time and disastrous times that we may continue to be a channel. I see myself as a channel, a channel of grace, and you are a channel of grace for the world, that God's grace will flow through you, that it will splash all over everybody around you. We come around the table in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ. All around the world, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again, knowing that great things will happen with even our little faith in the God of the universe is going to be all right. To God be the glory. Let's bow our heads just for a moment. Thank you, Jesus. Father, increase our faith today. Touch and anoint every heart that's here to know and recognize as we look back on our lives through the many, many times of, of trouble and tumult that you have brought us through. And you'll do it again, Lord. You'll do it again. So in Jesus' name, calm the spirits of every saint of God here that we might have faith, faith in you, faith in the risen Christ. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 Our procedure this uh, this morning will we'll come to the uh, up on each side, go up, uh, come up the side aisles, exit the, go back to your seat up the middle aisle, line up on this table. Those that are able and wish to, please kneel, and uh, we'll serve you at the at the uh, at the rail. Let's turn our hearts to the to the bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is pure delight to be in your presence. It is an amazing thing to think of joining Christians all over the world to celebrate the new life that we all enjoy in Jesus Christ our Lord. You have made us one family. You have united Christians from the United States and Christians from Costa Rica, Korea, Africa, Palestinian Christians, and Chinese Christians, Zimbabwe Christians, and Jamaican Christians, all in one family. You have given us brothers and sisters who live on every continent, who speak every language imaginable, and then some. You have given us brothers and sisters who think like us, who get along with us, and even some who get on our nerves every single day. And you love us all as your family and expect us to love one another as family. And so as your family on earth, together with the members of your family in heaven, we join together and give to you our unending song of praise. No one is holy but you, O oh Lord. No one is as faithful as your son Jesus Christ who taught us the transforming experience that is ours when we see and we know and we love. On that last night, Jesus surrounded himself with those whom he knew would betray, deny, and desert him. Yet he washed their feet and enjoyed an evening of feasting with them. Taking bread, he gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave a portion to everyone present, saying, This is my body broken for you. Whenever you eat this bread, remember me. At the end of the meal, taking the cup, Jesus gave thanks to you and said, This is my blood shed to ratify God's covenant of grace with you and with many 
for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink of this, remember me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Holy Spirit, make these make holy these gifts of bread and cup, and each person here, all who are seeking to live a life that can only be found in relationship with Christ. May your spirit inspire and empower your whole church, apostolic and universal. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at your heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ that was broken for you. The blood of Christ. The glorious cup of our salvation shed that you might live. table is served.
stand as you're able to sing page 452.